some good news. Some good news. everyone and welcome back to SGN. I'm John Krasinski and it only took you five weeks to figure out the way to my heart. Craft art. And I know what you're all thinking so let's get straight to the yarn. Yep, we'll dive right into the deep end with this near mirror image slash voodoo doll of me from Stitchy Witchcraft. The second photo of just my lower half? Worth it. We go next to this expert needlepoint of me and I assume Emily rising out of the grave. And this one I actually didn't have time to write a joke for because I was too busy sobbing. This was also a big week for the chalk game which was kicked up to a whole new level. But without a doubt, the most time staring at it award goes to Ryan Kelly. I know the first appointment I'm making when I get out of quarantine. <laughs> but for now, it's time for some good news. In the past few weeks, we've delved into a segment called What Did I Miss? But the truth is, the overriding thing we all miss is being together. And whether it's a dinner party or a birthday party, a first date or a 50th anniversary, there's really only one place where all of these things happen all the time. And when this thing comes to an end, and it will come to an end, the first place you're gonna go is to your favorite restaurant. Making up the second largest employer in the United States with over 15 million people, these staples of community and of culture are not only some of the places that are being hit the hardest, they're some of the places where you can find the biggest heroes. From the inspiring stories of selfless camaraderie to the heart-wrenching stories of simply doing what's right. These are the people who once defined your neighborhood and are now defining humanity. From Washington DC all the way to Spain, Chef Jose Andres hasn't decided to do something. He's decided to do the thing. Setting up kitchens anywhere from inside churches to inside national stadium his goal is a simple one, feed as many people as possible. From frontline workers to the elderly, from the homeless to his fellow furloughed service workers, just this week, Jose and his team have served over three million meals. Through his travels on diners, drive-ins, and dives, Guy Fieri has witnessed the unparalleled hard work and determination of America's restaurant workers. And knowing that nearly every person in the restaurant industry is living paycheck to paycheck, he has firsthand knowledge of just how hard these people are being hit. So he jumped in to help them. I'm starting to put the math together and I'm going, wait a second, we got tens of thousands of restaurants, tens of thousands of restaurants and three million employees right now that are without jobs. These folks need some help. You know, the restaurant employees have been taking care of us. We walk into a restaurant, walk into a bar, walk into a, a coffee shop, and they're there to greet you and say hello to you and make you feel good and take care of you. Well, now's our chance as the public to come and take care of them. But the beautiful thing about food and all this is that you don't have to be a big time chef to make a huge difference. In Washington State, nearly 300 National Guardsmen are processing and packing meals for nearly 300 food banks throughout the state. In Boston, Joy Huang admits that she can't treat patients and she can't sew masks. So what can she bring to Beth Israel Hospital? Pure joy. And in Seattle, Washington, Eduardo Jordan shows his son Akil what a local hero really looks like, as he dedicates his restaurant to feeding those out of work from any other. In Tybee Island, Georgia, Jennifer Knox was looking for a way to help out her out of work staff, and the answer 
was all around her. In West Allis, Wisconsin, this family proves you don't need a restaurant to be able to help out as they turn their front lawn into a 24-hour food pantry. And what do you do if you can't actually cook at all for those in need? Well, one New York City landlord knew the answer. You give free rent to the ones who can. And a quick side note, it's heartwarming to point out that every single person in that segment that was making food to make a difference, they were doing it all without charging a dollar. Because that is just what heroes do. But it wasn't just the foodies having fun this week. Positivity could be found positively everywhere. In Spain, one taxi driver who had spent every single day driving patients to and from the hospital free of charge got what he thought was just another call. In upstate New York, when Maeve Ray Bogner delivers good news, she gets right to the point. This week, the Boston Marathon was canceled, but nothing was gonna cancel Shawnee Mission North High School's assistant principal. In New Jersey, this family finally cracked and said enough is enough. We're having a spa day. In Kansas City, while football season takes a break, tailgating season never does. And in Lancashire, England, after finding out that Ken slept with a photo of his late wife every single night, one of his caretakers had an idea. Hello. Hey. I got you a present. What's up, darling? Ha! Oh! Oh! Oh my oh. God! Let me see, Ken. Show us what you've got, Ken. Let me see what you... Oh, Ken. <laughs> How beautiful. I thought that might be a bit better than your photograph. Oh. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> and finally, in this weird world of isolation, a phenomenal trend has popped up for those of us who are all dressed up and nowhere to go. And we go now to a segment we like to call SGN Potluck. I reached out to all of you this week to send me your favorite family recipes. And in the all too familiar spirit of stealing intellectual property on this show, I actually stole your recipes for my dinner party. But being one of the least capable chefs on the planet, I really needed some help. Nana! I love that you guys already have your drinks ready to go. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Shannon from Back Bay. How's Back Bay today? It is a little dreary out, to be honest, but <laughs> it's sunshiny inside. Penny! Hello. It is so nice to meet another person from Northbridge, right? Right. <laughs> Sarah! Hi! How you doing? I'm good. This is wild. It is so nice to meet you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for making your quarantini. It was a huge hit. Vanilla vodka. One. Two. And now we're going to give it a shake, shake, shake. You made one of the best drinks on the internet. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Your competition for best internet drink is right here, Nana. Ladies and gentlemen, Stanley Tucci. Yeah, but Nana, I think you win hands down. I love your recipe. I'm a pierogi fanatic. Oh, me too. <laughs> my mom sent me over the pierogi recipe that my great grandma brought over from Poland. I gotta be honest with you, Sarah, I did not cook them. But luckily, I know another Polish person who does know how to cook. Oh my God. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Sarah, are you familiar with Martha Stewart? Great hat. Thank you. I gotta say, you have a very worldly recipe here. I don't know if you know Mr. David Chang. 
Oh but my goodness. Boom, Sloppy Joes are some of my favorite, but the, I haven't had the dynamites before. I had a friend of mine cook them for you. Yeah. And he's way better at cooking than I am, so I figured you should probably just meet him. Guy Fieri, here he is. We had a blast with your uh, with your recipe. What a pleasure to meet you both of you, actually. <laughs> Trust me, he's cooler than me. And you know what? He knows it. Your grandma's recipe is very similar to my mother's recipe, which is my go-to. I made your drink. Vanilla vodka. She said two shots. That's two shots. Orange vodka, two shots. I won't be walking after this. Listen, I'm excited to make the dynamites. Taking a little bit of your recipe and doing a little Guy Fieri style NorCal, so let's uh, let's walk through it. And then this is a mixture of old white cabbage. Boy, is that good. Wait till you taste those. A couple other things I like about Shannon's recipe. She says three quarters of a glass of dry white wine for the dish and one glass of red wine for the chef. More recipes need to have that. See how nice it's coming together? Mm, such a good dough. There's some red bell peppers. There's some yellow onion. Uh, you want it spicy, right? A little jalapeno. Actually, a lot of jalapeno. Shannon, this is a very, very rich dish. <laughs> it looks really good. Smells really good. And then pull the dough up until it touches like that. But there, that's a nice plump pierogi. Give it a shake. Oh, my dogs are watching. <laughs> She's looking, thinking I might be making something with meat. Sorry, Bitmore. Shan, this dish is a very special occasion kind of dish. Ha <laughs> oh, ha, look at that, Penny. Here we have some beautiful sourdough bread, some local sourdough bread, and we're melted some sharp cheddar on there. Onions on top. Bring this monster over. You should see how much this weighs. Take a look at that. Nice. Huh? Oh, that's perfect with the onion rings. That's delicious. Cheers to both of you. Yes, thank cheers. you. Thank you. Cheers to both of you. Yeah, cheers to you. Look how delicious that is. Like we do it on Triple D. Penny, you rock. Hope you like the Guy Fieri Dynamite. That is awesome. Well, now you have to make it for me, Guy. Come on, man. I thought I made enough of it that there would be some leftovers, but if things go the way they're going now, I don't think we'll have any, you know, by the time we get into the weekend. <laughs> Thank you. That is so good. Yes, that's amazing. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for making that. That's so cool. So Sarah, I hope I did your recipe proud. Oh my God, that's amazing. I gave Martha pierogies because I'm Polish, she's Polish, having no idea that they take all day. They were so good. We drank a lot of vodka last night in your honor. <laughs> Shannon, I'm not kidding you. My wife said it was the best thing she's eaten during quarantine. Oh. <laughs> you heard it here first, the SGN potluck, of which Ooh. I had nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making my entire year by doing this. Oh, that's nice. And um, also, I think for restaurants and stuff, if people buy gift cards to use at a later date, that's the biggest thing I think that could help people out, especially the local businesses. So From your lips to God's ears, right? Let's do it. Yeah, to our mouths. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guy, you make every single one of us smile. So we here at SGN thought it was time that you smile. You have an incredible initiative going. And the last time I checked, you've raised about $17 million? Just about 17 million and uh, on our way to 100 million, I hope. Uh, a couple of friends of mine over at PepsiCo heard that we were doing this show. And I know they've already donated to you big, but they heard you were close to 20 and they said they wanted to put you over 20. So they're donating $3 million to you, my man. Are you serious? Yes, I am Ooh. dead serious. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Look at the guy, dude, he's giving me goosebumps. Oh, brother, I'll tell you what. It's it's friends knowing friends and take, I mean, wow, dude. We need more people like you, man. And guess what? I answer the age old question on SGN, which is what do you get for $3 million? You get a whole lot of love from my house. Well done on the artwork, by the way. That's my daughter's. Mine would be so terrible looking. You're awesome. Dude, what? thank you so much, Guy. And thank you for all you do, man. Thank you for doing this show. Thanks for doing SGN. We absolutely love you, man. Bro, I'm speechless. I'm really just, I'm in awe. Thank you. All right, brother. Take See care, ya. Guy. And that'll do it for all of us here at SGN Cooking. I'm John Krasinski. This is SGN asking you to remember that no matter how hard things get, there is always good in the world. 
and I'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>